So this is a 7 Artisan 50mm f1.8, the first full frame autofocus lens by 7 Artisans. And today I want to talk about the autofocus and how well it performed as well in a bit of low light capabilities of sports photography. I've done a video already of a review on it, but full disclosure, once again, they sent me this lens. They have no say into what I'm going to talk about. They didn't exchange anything with me. They sent it to me in hopes that I would review it. And if I saw that it was useful for you guys, I wanted to do a review on it, which I wanted to share some insights on it because surprisingly for this price point of this lens, it's worked rather well. So I want to jump into talking about the basically the autofocus of this lens because it is a very cheap lens and I was very curious to see how well a lens of this caliber could perform with kind of like sports photography or a lot of movement and especially with a low light shooting with an f1.8 since this lens is a very interesting lens because you can do quite a bit for you know the budget. So I use this lens setup with my Tennis Academy, trying to get a lot of video that I could to test out how well the autofocus would come around with my students moving and everything like that, just to see if it could keep up. That's the main thing with a lot of these more cheaper alternatives. Sometimes they're great for the budget, but the autofocus tends to fail and not you know, translate well with communicating with the camera. I use this lens with my Sony a7 IV when it came down to doing a lot of videos and photos, just to test out how well it could perform form at f1.8 as well as just kind of having a lot of motion and keeping track of my subject as well as possible to get some nice crisp video especially since we're trying to do a little bit more of a low light style since we're using the lights of the tennis courts we're not really using a lot of the sunlight or anything because i wanted to see if it was going to be focus hunting or anything like that because that tends to be the more of the issue when it comes down to a lot of lenses like this that when the lower light starts kind of hitting the autofocus doesn't perform as well because it can't you know differentiate a lot of things so that was my ultimate goal when testing out this lens because for a price point of about two hundred dollars from what i've been told since i'm still kind of haven't been told the official price yet i've been waiting on that with uh you know seven artisans but they kind of gave me a ballpark that was going to be around the 200 dollar mark that's what i talked about before which if it is around that mark you you can't really go wrong with this lens i mean it actually surprisingly performed a lot better than i thought you had some crisp video that i was actually doing it where I was tracking my subject I was moving with it I was trying to make sure that everything I could capture would be as ideal as possible when it came down to getting just videos of the kids playing focusing on them as much as possible shooting it at f1.8 mainly because I wanted to ensure that it would have the most light into the camera to you know retain as much information as possible with not having to crank up the ISO but for me surprisingly this worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to work even the photos turn out to be a lot smoother and nicer nicer and sharp it really you know captured the autofocus quite nicely which that was actually something that I was really hoping for because like I said a lot of third-party lenses on the cheaper side and the autofocus can kind of become a little bit of an issue even lenses like the Tamron prime lenses they're like the 20 millimeter the 24 millimeters they're like I don't know, $200, 250 or something like that. The autofocus on those actually weren't as great as one would hope for. It would hunt quite a bit and also you could hear it quite a bit, which was kind of annoying to, to have that if you're trying to film yourself. I used to have a 20 millimeter prime lens from Tamron. There was an F2.8, got it for cheap because I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to get. And I used it quite a bit and it worked out for the time being, but like a lot of drawbacks that can happen. The autofocus would kind of sometimes hunt, even if you would put it for, you know, track yourself. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes on to cheaper side of lenses. But with that being said, surprisingly, this one had fairly very accurate autofocus and it would not miss a lot of the, you know, focus points that I needed to capture my subject. I was able to capture my students playing tennis, hitting shots, a lot of video and everything that surprisingly most of the time I would have expected it to fail, but it actually performed rather surprisingly well. Now, is it going to be perfect and fast like other lenses? Of course not. This is a budget lens, but if you're on a tight budget and you want to have a good nifty 50 lens, surprisingly, you'll have a good nifty 50 lens. I mean, for a 1.8, 
I mean, in, in like about $200 and you get really good autofocus when paired with your camera, it's kind of hard to beat because sometimes it's just, you just don't want to spend too much on a simple kind of type of lens. You just want to have something nice and easy to use and are wanting to bring around. So in case it gets damaged or something, you're not, you know, losing a lot of money compared to other lenses that you could have obtained. So for me, is it going to be my go-to sports photography lens? Well, obviously not. I have other lenses that I can use a lot easier, more efficiently. But if I was wanting a lens that I could just get into having a more prime lens and having for good low light, good autofocus on a very strict budget, you're not going to go wrong with this one, to be honest. And surprisingly for me, I'm still kind of in shock that it actually performed this well. So yeah, it's just my personal experience. It might not coincide with other people's experience, but I mean, I've done a video before, like my only lens reviews about this lens, using it more for the studio portraits and outdoor portraits and kind of like a lot of movement kind of style of portraits just to capture the subject. And it performed pretty well and it was very sharp when it needed to be. I don't pixel peep if that helps you out because I don't really care to know if the edges are too soft or maybe it wasn't as, I mean, if the ultimate result is still very good photos and it looks nice and everything, there's not like, you know, color shifts or anything, I'm gonna be happy with it but one of the drawbacks with this lens that I did notice is going to be whenever you're shooting towards a light source you have essentially kind of the coating of the lens right there the like that it would just kind of like I don't know it would just make the light leaks look very weird because it would kind of like go down onto it which was my only gripe when it came down to using this lens I actually thought it was first like my you know Pro Mist filter, or I guess my Cinebloom filter that I have from Moment, and I thought it was just acting weird because when it comes down to night photography and the harsh lights, I like to use a Cinebloom just to diffuse the lighting a little bit, so it's not as a harsh kind of feel of lights. But I took it off and it still had the same situation. So with that being said, keep that in mind that whenever you're shooting with a light source, it might kind of like leak into the front part of the lens, which could affect it. I mean, you could probably use a lens hood, but to be honest, I never use a lens hood just cause they're so bulky to bring around that I don't really care to. But if you're that person, maybe it will work better for you with a lens hood so that it can help some of the, you know, the light leaks like be minimized and be able to be used a lot easier. So that's just basically the only gripe that I had with it. Besides the, the build quality, it's not the most ideal sometimes with the autofocus to manual focus switch. It's still something that I'm going to be kind of hesitant on to promote in a sense because I'm not confident that it's good. I think they could have done a lot better on those aspects or just take it off completely because if it's not going to be done right, don't put it because I feel like it's just going to, I guess, make people angry and then they're not going to like it anyway. I, I'm not like saying that it's going to be moving that easily depending how you shoot, but it does move quite rather easy. Like I'm barely moving it right there and it's, you know, moving like that compared to if I bring this lens over here where it's more clickety click whenever you're having it you know like you kind of click it right there in the stays or click it over there if you want the um, autofocus and manual focus one it clicks it loudly like that this one doesn't really have a sound it's just like kind of moves there so that's the only gripe of it obviously the aperture ring is nice to have but i don't think it's very useful because it doesn't click and if you're just sliding through you might slide through it quite a bit if you're trying to do you know some kind of shooting so i just keep it on the a so that i can control it with my actual camera itself but other than that i mean for on like about 200 dollars worth of a lens you're gonna have a pretty decent nifty 50 that for the autofocus part, which is the main focus of this part of the video, you'll have pretty good results and it'll perform pretty well, even at f1.8. So hopefully that'll help you out to decide if this could be a good lens for you. Just wanted to kind of have a little bit of a chat about that because I think after using it with my Tennis Academy kids and everything, it was really nice to see how well they were, you know, how well does this perform with it for the autofocus to keep track of my subjects and get some nice results. So. Hopefully you enjoyed the examples and you know my thought process on it. If you have any questions of it, please leave them down below and I would love to help you out to see if this is a lens for you. You're also welcome to check out the affiliate links about this lens if you wanna support the channel that way at no extra cost to you. And if I, you can find it cheaper anywhere else, go for it. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Whatever works best for you, it's always happy for me. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.